welcome everyone and thanks for joining us for today's webinar uh, 32 social media tips to crush it in your future campaigns my name is Liam Maroney and I'm the demand generation manager here at NewsCred and your presenter today is going to be Alexa Viali who is NewsCred social media and content strategist just to get some quick housekeeping tips out of the way the webinar is going to last for roughly about 30 35 minutes and then we'll take questions at the end uh, if you do have any questions throughout the webinar please just type them into the question box at any stage and we'll make sure to uh, get to them at the end seeing as this is a social webinar we definitely encourage you to uh, interact with us on twitter with our handle at newscred or using our hashtag think content so uh, without any further ado i will pass you over to alexa Thanks, Liam. Hi, everyone, and welcome. As Liam said, my name is Alexa Bialy, and I'm a social media and content strategist here at NewsCred. A little bit about me and my background. I have a background in content editing, social media, social media and public relations. I served as a content editor and digital copywriter at Trevora Media, another startup in New York City um, based in travel and at a PR agency where I served as an account manager and digital strategist for luxury travel clients, including Nantucket Island Resorts and Park Hyatt, among others. And now at NewsCred, I oversee all of our content marketing from creating and implementing our social strategy to publishing social content and day-to-day -day community management across all of our channels. So I've worked at NewsCred for almost a year now, and in that time, we really have ramped up our social media strategy in fact, just this past February, we reached over 100,000 followers on Twitter and grew our overall Twitter audience from the time I started to now by 423%. And in addition to social media, I'm also a regular contributor to our blog with a weekly content marketing news roundup. You might have seen that in our newsletters and some in-depth case studies. And I also help create creative 360 degree cross team campaigns to build brand awareness and facilitate brand loyalty. So with that, we'll go ahead and get started. Today we're gonna cover a few things. We're gonna first give an overview of the uses and the demographics of the three social channels most important to our social strategy at NewsCred. We're gonna go through the best practices for each of those social channels. We're gonna look at some paid and organic next strategies and show you what has historically worked for us here at NewsCred and finally go through how to measure the results and improve the ROI of your social media marketing and of course I don't think a presentation is complete without some gifts so here's my girl Betty White calling it the Twitter which as a social media strategist never ever gets old so the big question that we have to ask ourselves as social media marketers is are you keeping up so with the social media world changing so fast are you adapting to the new product rollouts that happen every week and are you up in your game as the social media strategies change as the platforms develop and social media has been around for a long time by internet standards for example Facebook and YouTube recently celebrated their 10th birthdays this year but marketers are still coming to grips with how to effectively tell their story on social and even early adopters have had to pivot and shift their strategies along the way and at NewsCred we talk to hundreds of clients every day and we understand the common pain points that our customers and that we've felt on social media so this webinar captures the latest social media changes and the best practices across the networks that are most important to us which are Facebook Twitter and LinkedIn so first to go through some of the social channel demographics wanted to highlight a couple of important statistics here so 52 percent of online adults now use at least two social media sites so gone are the days to say oh I just have a Facebook page or I just am on Twitter 56 percent of all online adults 65 and older use Facebook so that's a demographic that has been shifting towards the older demographic as it's gotten as Facebook has matured a bit itself and then 53% of internet using young adults use Instagram so that's certainly the youngest demographic of the social channels and 50% of internet users with college educations use LinkedIn and you guys can read through this on your own and please feel free to take screenshots along the way as well but this is really to give an overview and build a foundation of all the social channels that we care about and and really go through how to understand what it's associated with how the platform works and who uses it and it's also important to measure of 
course your performance. So we're going to take we're going to take a closer look at some key performance indicators, KPIs to measure a little later on in the presentation. But wanted to build this foundation first before we can move on. So a couple other things to highlight. So Twitter users follow a median of six brands on Twitter, and they're looking for things such as fun and interesting content, news and updates, and discounts and promotions. And the influencer Gary Vaynerchuk recently spoke at the Guardian Summit saying that Twitter will die if it doesn't fix its noise problem, meaning that as marketers, it makes our job that much harder to cut through the noise to reach the right audience. So we have to constantly, constantly be keeping up. And Facebook posts is certainly the most visual. And so posts with photos get 53 more likes, 104% more comments, and 84% more click-throughs. And Adweek recently published a study confirming the statistic that visuals are an integral component to Facebook and, can, and are really, really helpful in generating organic reach for a brand's page. And LinkedIn now accounts for 64% of all social referrals to corporate homepages. So this means that not only do you absolutely have to be on LinkedIn and have a corporate homepage on LinkedIn, it's in your best interest to regularly update that as well, and not just with recruiting posts, but with content that your audience will crave as well. So moving right along to best practices. So once you've established what social media platforms make the most sense for your brand, it's certainly time to then make sure that you have a strategy and that you're implementing that strategy. And as you can see here, only 35% of B2B content marketers have a documented content strategy. So having a strategy just by and large will set you apart from the competition. And 72% of marketers say they use social media to develop loyal fans and 71% of marketers say they use social media to gain marketing intelligence. So we've shared this before in some of our other webinars, but I wanted to share it again with you guys because it's really important to learn that every behind every tweet, share, and purchase is a person like you and me. So while you may be communicating with your audience through a, your brand's handle or through your brand's Facebook page or LinkedIn profile, you always have to remember that, of course, you are a person and you're speaking to a person on the other side. So it really is in your best interest to act like a human and humanize your brand. So some best practices for overall, and this also goes beyond just the, the social platforms that we care about of, of Facebook and Twitter and LinkedIn that we've identified as the main drivers in our social strategy. This can go through LinkedIn, Pinterest, everything else as well. So you want to establish a unique voice and you want to stick with it. For example, if you've ever seen Denny's Diner on Twitter, they have a very, very unique voice and they are immediately identifiable by that voice. That's something that you want to emulate. You want people to know who you are just by reading your tweets or reading your Facebook page. You want to be transparent and authentic. So you can't, if you're gonna, if you are going to post something that is purely about selling your product, then make it so. Don't try to hide behind, try to sell your product by with a guise of something else. Just be very transparent and your audience will thank you in the long run. And this is something we get asked a lot. So we want to give due credit to authors and sources. So we've been asked before, so what do you do about, about licensed content and giving attribution? So what we do at NewsCred is whenever we have a piece of licensed content, which we publish every single day to our blog, we always make sure to give due credit to this original source. So we will post something, let's say on Twitter, and say via at Forbes or via at Business Insider. And we also do the same with our freelancers. We always give them attribution because they've spent their you know hard work and time putting together this piece for us. We want to show them that we appreciate it and that we care, so we give them attribution as well. You also always want to make sure that your images are optimized for both desktop and mobile. For example, Twitter has this kind of funky thing where they, where on mobile, sometimes the images get cropped off on the right-hand side. So if you're going to post a photo with text overlay, you want to make sure that that text is centered so it doesn't get cropped when you're looking at it from your mobile device. You want to maintain a consistent cadence. So one of the ways to build brand loyalty and to really build a following is to post consistently. So if, if your readers know that you're going to post a, no, a new piece of content on social at a designated time every single day, they'll be more likely to come back and check and say, oh, I'm, I want to check out what's new on, on the blog today or what's new on social today. 
you also want to make sure to respond to your fans and sometimes the haters in a timely manner. So it does go a long way even when somebody might be complaining and about customer service or anything at all to respond and say, hey, look, sorry about that. Let's either direct message us for more or let's take this conversation online and provide an email. There's nothing, there's nothing at all wrong with saying that to somebody on Twitter. And of course, responding to people who say, say very positive things. We frequently thank people from NewsCred saying, who are saying great posts, love the infographic. We always try to respond and say thanks so much for sharing, really appreciate it. You want to truly know your audience and know who you're talking to. And this goes across the demographics that we spoke about with the different social networks too. You want to know who's on what network, what your tone should be, and really figure out who you're speaking to. Because sometimes if you're speaking to a CEO, of course, you're not speaking the same way you speak to that person as an intern, right? So you want to really make sure you know who you're speaking to. And finally, have a variety of content. So this bar down here is sort of illustrating the 411 rule of variety in your content. So that means original, licensed, user-generated content, white papers, guides, thought leadership, etc. And then sharing one influencer post and one publisher post. Because you want to make sure your social accounts demonstrate interaction. So you want to interact with the people who you're trying to reach. And that means sometimes sharing uh, a post that a publisher might post that they that your audience craves and they read every day or an influencer for that matter. So diving right into Twitter. So we post one tweet an hour, seven days a week between 8 a.m. and 2 a.m. And that's to keep up with the fast paced nature of Twitter because as we all know, Twitter is certainly the fastest in terms of feeds of all the networks. And if you only post a tweet twice a day, you're really missing a large part of your audience because the only people that are going to see that are the people that are online on Twitter at that very moment or people who go to your brand's handle and scroll down and read your entire Twitter feed. And so you can't really bank up that that's going to happen. So you should try as best you can to post as many times as possible. And don't be afraid to post the same tweet more than once or with A-B variations. We do this all the time. We will, there's actually a couple of tweets in our rotation that have been there for months at this point. And it's because we've seen high engagement and we keep seeing high engagement so we keep recycling that content in those posts and that's totally fine to do. And finally, say thanks. It's the most effective way to increase organic engagement and followers and build that brand loyalty as we spoke about. And then this screenshot here is from our task manager within our software and you can just see how many tweets a day we post and what this looks like. So you have our workflows, it's checked when done, you have your images, and you keep everybody on the team accountable and have everyone really involved with the editorial component of your social media. And so you want to also interact with your audience on a human to human level. So here are two examples, one from my personal Twitter account and one from NewsCred that I wanted to highlight. So from my personal account, I frequently tweet at Pandora Radio, and this was one time uh, not too long ago where I got really excited that Man the Mirror by Michael Jackson came on my, on my Pandora. So I tweeted at them, and they came right back, and we had a nice little Twitter conversation, and there were about six more tweets going back and forth that aren't even shown here of us then starting to debate the whole essence of 2000s pop and Britney or, or Christina Aguilera, it got really in depth. But that was a great, a great um, example of human to human contact there, even with the brand. And then from NewsCred, we, this is known in the office as the White Castle story. One of our sales representatives sent White Castle to the Google office and what ensued was one of the greatest conversations that I've ever been a part of on social where White Castle jumped in and we had a back and forth with White Castle for quite a while and it was mostly a conversation through hashtags which also just upped the ante a little bit more and that's one of the beauty that's part of the beauty of social media is that in pretty much no world other than this would a a uh, square hamburger cheeseburger <laughs> restaurant chain and a B2B software company have a conversation, but lo and behold, here it, here it was. 
So you also want to be visual, and so tweets with photos are 150% more likely to be retweeted, and 78% of user engagement with brand, with brand tweets are via retweeting. And tweets with 100 to 130 characters get the most engagement and retweets, and this is because if you give people a little bit of room to add a comment to, um, before they uh, quote your tweet, that gives them the ability to put their own spin on it as well. Moving right along to Facebook, Newscred posts two times a day, five to seven days per week, and this is to align when our audience is most active. And as we mentioned before, visuals are a crucial element to Facebook, so you want to make sure that they are high quality and they help tell a story. And the content that you post should be varied, and it should be a mix of cultural and educational posts. And here we have in these two screenshots when we had some of our new hires start for them on one day. We published that, said New York office gained some more friendly faces. Here you go, got some good engagement. And then we also always make sure to post the new content that we have up on our blog on Facebook as well. LinkedIn is the same. We post two times a day, five to seven days per week. And Facebook and LinkedIn posts rather are certainly the most authoritative in terms of voice because of the demographic of having such a highly educated group on there. So it can't you can't just be posting your company updates and recruiting posts. You really want to make sure that you have content there as well. And you want to make sure that if you're going to change the copy of your social posts and you should not be publishing all of every single piece of copy across that's the same across all of your networks anyway, this is where you want to be the most authoritative. So moving along to paid and organic strategies. So another GIF because I had to. So sometimes when you're trying to figure out your paid and organic strategies, it can sort of feel like throwing money at a problem. But that is certainly, certainly not what it should feel like at all. It should feel like Liz Lemon dancing while money is falling. <laughs> but these are, these are very, very important to have both paid and organic strategies that work in tandem with each other. And we'll explain a little bit how that, how that works. So with organic strategy, as I mentioned, you want to recycle your content. Keep posting until it's dead. So if you do have a Facebook post that's getting a ton of engagement or Twitter posts that are getting a ton of engagement, keep, keep those in the rotation until you see, start to see a significant drop off. To grow your audience, you want to follow the people you care about. And while we do, while it is often mentioned that you should have a follower to following ratio of having more people follow you than you following people, it is absolutely okay to follow the people you care about. And it will only grow your audience and grow your audience with quality, not just quantitative trying to get your numbers up. And remember that it's not all about you. You can like and favorite other posts as well. And you should certainly do that as you build your audience and start to increase that brand loyalty. And I always want to give a little bit of caution when you are using these most tweetable words and phrases, but these are some things that can help to garner that engagement. So things like any sort of listicle language, like 10, best, top, how to's, check out, any call to actions or language that will facilitate engagement, those are okay to use, but never to the with the sake of just using them to use them. Here's what happens when you do that. So you all might remember a couple years ago when there was a huge PR crisis when Kenneth Cole tweeted an incredibly insensitive tweet about and using the hashtag Cairo in the middle of the uprising to peddle their new spring collection. So this is what happens when you try to use a hashtag for the sake of using a trending hashtag. It almost never works. Don't do it unless you know the backstory and why that's trending. A little bit more with organic strategy, you want to like and write back to people who comment. So if someone says, love this infographic, say, thanks so much for sharing, and then you can even say, if you like this, check out this post. That kind of engagement is absolutely invaluable. You want to play to the strengths of each platform. So you don't want to post every hour on Facebook. That's just going to clutter your fans' feeds, but you can do that on Twitter. So just knowing how these, how you can interact with people on these platforms is, is a huge component. And if you can, 
develop a unique hashtag for your brand. So at NewsCrowd, we use hashtag sync content. And the backstory of that is that we were trying to come up with a, a the hashtag for our 2014 content marketing summit. And we opened it up to the whole company, had a lot of great feedback, and we landed on sync content. And because of the success of last year's summit and the fact that our hashtag then trended nationally for two days, we actually rebranded our 2015 summit from just NewsCred Content Marketing Summit to the Think Content Summit, which, by the way, is May 14th. If you haven't registered, quick PSA to do that. And that's that's how we landed on our on our hashtag for our brand. And now, as you can see, we use it for all of our events, webinars, and everything else we do. And finally, you want to track everything, even your organic posts. So this is a screenshot to your right side of the screen that shows custom parameters in our software where we can just at the same time as posting to posting out and distributing across our social channels, we can add in those tracking parameters. So even if you're not directly linking to a piece of gated content, it's really helpful to track and see how people are landing on those pages on your website or on those blog posts to fill out those forms. So moving along to paid strategy, there are many ways to boost brand awareness with paid spend, and it looks very different across the platforms too. So Twitter, you have promoted tweets, you have lead generation cards, web cards. There's actually nine different cards you can use. And Facebook, you have boosted posts, you have ad sets, and then LinkedIn, you have sponsor updates and ad campaigns. And if you're unsure about what platform to use and what ads to use within those platforms, A-B tests until you get it right. And companies who test are 75% more likely to show ROI for content marketing than those who fail to test their strategies. And this is something we do at NewsCred all the time, and we'll get to that in a minute. But also, I just wanted to quickly point out this this is a web card that you're looking at here from MasterCard, and this is an interesting targeting piece for them. So they're targeting the results for United. So if you search United on Twitter, you would be served with this MasterCard ad, which makes sense because you're, they all this all fits together of you need to fly to get to a beach, and then when you're there, you want to use your MasterCard. So this is a good piece of targeting that I wanted to highlight before we move on. And when you're on Twitter and you're running these paid campaigns, you want to run at least three tweets per campaign. And this is because Twitter optimizes to show the ads that are performing best more often. So if you only have one tweet and it's not performing that well, Twitter won't optimize that to have it shown to most of your audience. But if you have three or even if you have 10, let's say, tweets per campaign, those will be cycled through more and will reach more people in your audience. And you want to spend time researching what hashtags and phrases that people you care about in your audience uses. And you can add those to the keywords section when you're setting up your ad campaigns on Twitter. So we use hashtag content marketing. We target hashtag social media marketing, which also can be abbreviated as SMM. We also will type in enterprise enterprise software and a bunch of other, we sometimes use up to 40 keywords per campaign. And when you spend time researching this, it will really pay out in the end and you can keep recycling these campaigns that perform well. And you want to think about the brands and the publishers and the companies that your audience follows and you can add those to the handle section when you're setting up your campaign. And so this could be if you know that your audience reads Business Insider, target at Business Insider, and that's something you can do as well. And as I mentioned, once you have a targeting formula, keep using it until you start to see a drop off in engagement, and then that's when you want to revisit your targeting and maybe improve what you have going already. But this screenshot is from a blog subscribe campaign that we ran recently, and this was one tweet of about 15 that we ran and these are some of the analytics around how this particular tweet performed and as you can see it did get quite a bit of good engagement so that was something that we that we wanted to keep using and this is another reason why you just want to have many many options when you're running these campaigns 
And so something that we did at NewsGrad that I wanted to share is we spent a lot of time testing on Twitter and we wanted to do this to see how the different tweets would perform when trying to drive to our blog subscribe landing page. And we wanted to try out promoted tweets, web cards, and lead generation cards. And so we used the same amount of spend, we used the same creative and the same copy with all three of those different types of tweets. And we found that promoted tweets and lead generation cards were the most effective in, in generating blog subscribes. And when we started doing this on December 1st, we gained over a thousand blog subscribes in a span of about 13, 14 days, and 14% of those turned into leads. Moving along to Facebook, you strategy is a bit different here. You want to ask yourself, how can this look the most native? And Facebook recently has come out with a bunch of new product rollouts that are that's making it really difficult to be completely salesy. And you have to make your your creative look native on Facebook. You want to segment your audience based on location, age, gender, interests, behaviors, connections, etc. to have the ticker on Facebook go from having a broad audience to a defined audience. And what this means is that you just want to make sure that you are hitting the right audience at the right time and the people that are going to see and interact with your ad are the people that you care about. When you are setting up these campaigns too, you want to make sure that the text on your visuals are less than 20% of the overall image size. And what this means is that when you're when you're in the back end and you're setting up your campaign, there's this grid system that Facebook uses that you have to click the grids in little boxes that have text in it. And if it's more than 20%, Facebook will reject your ad. So you definitely don't want to make you want to make sure that you are optimizing your visuals correctly. And you also want to be choosy about your ad placement. So a desktop newsfeed ad looks very, very different from the right column where it's very difficult to read and the images are much smaller. So be careful and take the time to think about where you want your ad to be seen and where it will best be optimized. And on LinkedIn, LinkedIn is the best platform to promote your high value content and your, that gated content that we talked about. It's also the best platform to segment your audience and you can get very, very granular with targeting. So as you can see here, we this is one of our ads that we ran that we were only targeting financial services. And we so we only so we just did our, our location, our industries, and then we go in by job function and we kept going. And you can always keep going on LinkedIn to get super, super granular. You can segment by company, you can exclude companies, you can exclude um, uh, positions, you can include certain things and behaviors and interests and you can really, really get a very defined audience on LinkedIn and absolutely take advantage of that. And in terms of quality, we found that LinkedIn sponsored stories yields a much higher quality and value leads than Google AdWords and 60% of leads are medium to high quality versus only 20% that we get coming from Google AdWords. And from an ROI perspective, every dollar invested in LinkedIn sponsored updates yields more than $17 in revenue, which is six times that ROI of AdWords, which is pretty incredible. And finally, targeted demand generation. So this is this is part of our product. This is Audience Insights. And this has been completely transformative in how our marketing team and how we target people um, in our own company. And what this does is it allows you to map the content journeys of the people most important to your brand. You can see what topics interest them, what they share, and what channels they frequent. And then this can help build the rest of your editorial calendar with your blog and really connect the content to social synergy. So this, this is the content journey of Martin Lieberman. He works at Staples. So he popped up in our software and we could see what kind of content he's been sharing and when he was sharing it. So we sent him a mailer of our ultimate, our five ultimate guides, a handwritten note from Shafkat and some chocolate. So we took a photo and he said, thanks so much. And we tweeted right back at him. So did our CEO Shafkat. And that was a great way to gain a new follower and gain a new brand, uh, brand ambassador for NewsCred. Measuring the results. So KPI measurement is essential for all marketing and that absolutely goes for social media as well. 
But while metrics are key, there isn't a one-size-fits-all for social, and each platform does have a unique set of KPIs that you want to pay attention to. So while 70% of content marketers are creating more content than they did a year ago, and as we mentioned, only just a few have a, document, a documented content strategy, only 21% say that they're successful at tracking ROI, so we're hoping that we can change that here. So what are we measuring? So KPIs on social media, we're looking for brand awareness, engagement, and lead generation. But KPI measurement is difficult for everyone. We have a quote down here from a case study that I did a little while ago about how social media analytics and measurement are failing marketers. And we have someone here who said, we're, probably, we're pretty much just reporting numbers even though these are not as accurate as they could be. So the solution to this is to measure what you care about and agree on it with your marketing team. That's the biggest takeaway here. You just want to find the numbers that your brand and that you care about and then target those and look at those. Don't drive yourself crazy with all these different analytics that you can use on every single platform. So again, you can, screech, you can screenshot this, go through on your own, but these are the KPIs that we've identified are the most important for brand awareness, engagement, and lead generation across Facebook, Twitter, and LinkedIn. So we have things, of course, followers, likes, page views, visitors, and then for that lead generation, we have link clicks to a form or a gated page, and we have all sorts of metrics that you want to pay attention to as you're going forward with your organic and paid strategies here. You also want to analyze your content at a macro and a micro level. So this is a screenshot of our platform. Again, we have our dashboard on the far left that's showing how our content has been performing over a certain period of time, then how social posts are performing. And you can compare and contrast and see are your social posts laddering up to your blog content and vice versa and then go one level deeper and look at the actual post itself and look at the actual creative and see what kind of engagement that's garnering. And this is something that will really help too if you're A-B testing to see what photo does better, what copy does better, and what you can change to really make sure that that's optimized to the best of its ability. So this is something that was really interesting. We, when we found that if you increase your blog posting cadence and consistency, Everything across the board with social grows. So this slide's a bit old as we're over we're at over 100,000 followers today, Twitter followers, but there's important takeaways here that as you increase your cadence and posting those new pieces of content across your platforms that you're following will absolutely grow right along step with it. And by increasing our original content production, our traffic jumped. So in April, we were only publishing one original and five licensed posts per week on our blog. And after April, we were posting five original and five licensed posts per week. And we found that our unique visitors increased by almost 50%. And this directly related to social ad spend to increase reach and engagement. So not only does social promotion increase unique visitors, this was showing that we targeted the right users and we reached the right audience. And this led to an increase in our unique visitors as well. And our social sharing drove increases in reach, engagement, and finally, the thing that everyone cares most about, conversions. And these are this is an aggregate of all of, of all the numbers that we found increased, which we found we had a 60% social traffic jump from our April increase in cadence. We increased our blog subscribes by 30%. Social shares increased by 2.6 times. And this was all done at 50% less of our normal medium to high quality loss. So this was done at scale and it was efficient as well. A few more pro tips before we leave you. Put a period before the at mention on Twitter so your tweets show up in your timeline and not in replies and therefore more people will see them since not everyone knows to then just click over to the replies section on your Twitter feed. You want to know your audience, so leverage technology like NewsCred that provides search, social, and audience behavioral analytics. You want to get that full picture of who your audience is and what they want so you can better inform your own marketing decisions within your organization. Visuals are key. Blatant stock images, those won't cut it anymore. Everyone knows that a really happy, excited, uh, 
the photo of a uh, quote unquote office is not really the best and that really lacks authenticity. So make sure that your images are telling your story and that they are just cut and copied um, images. You want to think about the burrito effect. So this is a, has a funny name, but it actually makes sense. So if someone has time to eat a burrito, they have time to also check their media, their social media accounts. So think about when somebody might have time to finally take a breath in their day and post something during that time period. And ideally, you should engage with everyone who at mentions you across all platforms. That goes back to the saying thanks, making sure you're engaging with people and making sure that your presence is being felt across all of the platforms that you care about as a brand and that your audience feels the love. And remember that there is a human on both sides of the computer. And we've found in our own efforts, and I'm sure you have as well, if you act like it, you will be rewarded. So if you're ready to take your social media marketing to the next level, We'd love to help. As we just showed you, Audience Insights has been completely transformative in the way that we run our social media in addition to the planning and publishing features in our calendar. So please, please give us a shout when you're ready for a demo. And with this, I'm going to pass it back to Liam so we can take some questions. Thank you very much, Alexa. That was terrific. Uh, we actually have a lot of questions, so I'm just going to jump straight into them. One of the most common questions that keeps coming up is, is this presentation going to be available after the webinar? It absolutely is. We're going to be following up once this is over, and we'll make sure to give you a download link to this. Uh, one of the first questions we had, Alexa, is um, you mentioned earlier that there was a uh, cadence of one tweet per hour. Is that something you advise for any particular industry, or is it just news outlets? No, I would, I would, I would say that that's a pretty good cadence for any brand across any industry. This is purely because of how quickly Twitter moves. So, to really get in front of the people that you care most about as a brand and that people and the people that want to read your content, you do need to be on top of that quick feed and make sure that your cadence is keeping up with the fast-paced nature of Twitter and that you are cutting through that noise. There are so many, so many tweets being sent out every minute, every hour, every second. You want to make sure that to that you are reaching the right people and you want to make sure that you're staying top of mind. So the more the better, honestly, on Twitter. That's that's how it goes. We're getting a lot of questions about Instagram. Do you have any particular best practices for Instagram? For example, how often we should post on Instagram? Sure. So there's actually there are some there's a couple of really great brands that I want to mention on Instagram that if anyone's having trouble with their Instagram strategy, they should take a look at. Take a look at FedEx and take a look at IBM. These are two companies that I've definitely identified that are really, really amazing on Instagram. And as a B2B company too, those it's not always the easiest and maybe not always the most obvious choice of a social media platform. But certainly, I'd say cadence-wise for Instagram, start with once a day and see how see what kind of engagement you're garnering and then if you want to experiment going to two times a day, three times a day, that's absolutely fine. See what works best with your brand and again, if you start to see either an engagement spike or an engagement drop off, adjust your strategy as such and maybe adjust your cadence as well. What are your thoughts on followbacks on Twitter and Instagram? A lot of brands seem to only follow the fans that are relevant to their brand, whereas other ones seems to follow every single fan. What would you suggest? That definitely depends on the organization and what you, and as a brand, sort of what your credo is. For example, Chanel doesn't follow a single person on Twitter, and they have well over, they have well into a couple million fans, and that's because their brand cachet is, you know, we're Chanel, we don't need, we don't really need people, we don't need to follow people, we want people to follow us, and that's just part of their brand and their strategy. But at Newsgrad, I can speak from experience, we, we follow anyone who is interested in content marketing, social media marketing, people, actually this week, someone 
said had a really really nice thing to say about us on Twitter said would really love if you could follow me I really appreciate it and I love your tweets and we did and for us that works with our strategy because we do try to be friendly and approachable and we aren't this exclusive elite you know very standoffish brand on social and we want to be we want to be friendly and make sure that we are reaching our fans and that was and that was one way that we did it so I'd say that it definitely needs it definitely needs to be discussed when you're talking about your marketing strategy but on the whole I don't see any problem with following people back especially people who care about what you have to say and they are good brand ambassadors for you do you have any tools or techniques to determine which hashtags your audience uses most often Sure. So probably not one that you'd love to hear right away, but this I, I personally spent a very, very long time just reading. And what I mean by that is take a look at, identify influencers in your particular marketplace, look at what they're saying, what hashtags they're using, and start from there. Start at the top with influencers that you care about and that are really making waves in your space and then go down from there. See who's interacting with those tweets, for example. See what hashtags they're using. Take a look at either competitors or like-minded brands. See what hashtags they're using. And you can make an informative decision based on all of this research and reading time that you that you'll spend and you can see really you have, actually that's a really great way to po to plan and see what and form your social media strategy of what you should target going forward, especially when you start running those paid campaigns as well. We have a very interesting question here. It seems a bit specific, but I think it actually could apply across the board. Do you have any suggestions on targeting posts when you don't have any specific competitors um, and you just have trouble reaching your target audience? So, for example, if you were trying to target an audience and you weren't, you didn't have any specific brands that you could use in your targeting on Twitter, any particular way of tracking down the right audience for you? Yeah, so that would, I would kind of almost bucket that in it's a similar answer that I just gave. Take the time then to do to do your research and take a look at and you know take a look at who's talking about that particular topic in this space and that can help better inform when you're moving forward because I understand that you know if, if you aren't targeting specific specific brands there are still many many options and how you can target across and, and reach that audience on social whether that's on Twitter on Facebook LinkedIn you can there are very creative ways you can target so it doesn't necessarily have to be an at brand handle we have a great question here, actually. How do you manage that many posts on Twitter every day? Do you need to have someone dedicated to Twitter all day from 8 a.m. till 2 a.m.? That would be, there are definitely companies that do that. We are not one of them. I, as a, sort of, we joke about this on the market team, as grandma status human being, I am not awake at 2 a.m., so I'm certainly not posting them. Um, so the NewsCred software, we we have the ability to schedule our social posts. So we generally are about a day and a half to two days ahead of our social posting. And we kind of let it run on autopilot. And of course, there's always times where we're going to want to jump into a conversation and at mention somebody or just tweet on the fly. That does happen often. But for the most part, and especially in terms of scheduling, and especially during those off hours that, that you might not be awake, but people across the ocean might be awake, then you want to make sure that you're reaching those people as well. So schedule your posts and take advantage of that editorial calendar and that plan and leverage a software like NewsCrab that does allow you to publish and post um, with a schedule and plan it out ahead of time. I think we have time for one last question here, actually. So uh, one question we have here is, on the note of posting per hour, do you pick particular topics per day, for example, a theme, or how would you track what your audience wants to participate with? So that's a great question. Um, we tend to have a variety, and that goes back to the variety of content point, that we like to have a variety throughout the day of different posts. So we might have one that talks about social media strategy. We might have another one that talks about how to manage your freelancers. 
we might have another one that's top uh, B2B Instagram feeds for insta inspiration. And then we might have one that's announcing, let's say, a webinar. So these are all things that, while they might seem a little disjointed, are all part of the ecosystem of content marketing, of marketing, of what we we want our audience uh, to learn about and what we've identified as themes and subjects that our audience is reading on a daily basis. So while we personally don't have, we don't have a theme necessarily per day, that can work, especially with Instagram too. There's been a bit of a resurgence of the hashtag TBT Throwback Thursday. So if you have something to use for that, that's that's one theme day and one hashtag, for example, that I would that I would suggest that that's something you could jump on as a brand if it makes sense with your overall strategy and it doesn't feel arbitrary. Nothing should feel arbitrary, but you can go ahead and post on different topics that are all relative within your larger um, organization and the larger ecosystem of your brand. Fantastic, thanks Alexa. So we did have a few questions that were very industry specific and, and very, very sort of targeted. So um, if we didn't answer your question, uh, we'll either reach out to you after this webinar and we'll handle it personally. Or if you have any other questions, please feel free to contact us. We have a great team who uh, will be more than happy to help you out with this. So uh, once again, thanks you to Alexa for a, a terrific webinar and thanks everybody for uh, joining us today.